Um, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you're connecting uh, with me from. Uh, you're warmly welcome. This is Rescue World, and this event is our event we've titled The Young and Free. If you can hear me and you're uh, getting the stream, I just wanted to, you know, send a comment, send a like, like the link, like the page, invite a friend. Let's know you are flowing and connecting with us. Once again, you're welcome. This is Rescue World, and this is our special event that we've titled Young and Free. And before I proceed, I'd like to, I would like to share a word of prayer with us all. So just join me as we say a word of prayer. Father, we're grateful for another privilege to sit at your feet and hear from you. We gather, even in these unusual times, in an unusual way, but we believe that in spirit we are connected as one. As we come, open up our hearts and our minds to understand the truth of your word, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that you grant unto us divine understanding. You grant us grace even to be able to walk in the things that you teach us. We pray that even for the speaker, you shall give utterance, that he shall speak not of his own mind and of his own will, but that which your spirit influences him to speak. We receive of the spirit and not just of the letter. Let today be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus, I we prayed. Amen. Yes, once again, I'm just reminding us, let's share the link. Let's um, invite others. Let's comment, you know. So just a little introduction about um, Rescue World for those of you connecting with us for the very first time. Rescue World is uh, non-denominational, you know, um, and not-for-profit organization. And our goal is to spread the much less love of God we do this in different ways, first and foremost, by fulfilling the Great Commission of um, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. We also uh, engage in providing humanitarian support to various people underprivileged in the society. And one other branch of what we do is to organize conferences like this, where we are able to edify the body of Christ, as it were, and encourage more missionary work get people to understand what it means to, to be a Christian, get people to understand what it means to, you know, spread the good news of Christ to different parts of the world, get people to understand the message of the Bible. We have breakfast meetings and other different events. This specific event is what, we've, what we call Young and Free. We believe it's a gathering of young people. The current generation is different. One of the things that makes it different is that there is what I believe is a knowledge explosion and there's very easy access to all manner of knowledge all over the world. And um, what that means for us is that there has to be reason to the faith that we carry. There has to be a certain understanding. We believe that the, the Christian faith is supernatural, but we believe it is with reason. We don't believe it's unreasonable. When you read the Bible, I believe in um, in First Peter, Peter admonishes, the, the believers that they should exalt Christ in their hearts and be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks a reason for the hope that's in them, a reason. So it is supernatural, but it's not unreasonable. Our faith has reason. And so we are here to try and get some reason to a number of things, a number of things. And one of the things we want to try and get a reason to is the idea of truth. Truth. We believe that Jesus is the way, the truth and the light, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And so is there a reason to this? Is this a reasonable assertion to make? We believe that the Bible is final authority on all matters of life and conduct. Is that true? Is there a reason to it? And we are honored today. We have um, a brother that I have encountered, someone whose ministry personally blessed me, and he's going to speak to us. And he is an editor with... Um, the Institute for Christian Apologetics in Ghana. Um, he completed um, BSc Civil Engineering in Kia University, where I met him. And he also has an MBA from SRM University in India. And he's been engaged in all um, different kinds of speaking and writing for ICAS. Um, he has been with us in, as, a, as a ministry before uh, in our last edition of this kind of program. He was a blessing. And we are very excited to have him. And so join me as we welcome my own brother, someone I've known, like someone who has impacted me personally, Mr. Nana Asari, Siedu 
as he speaks to us on the topic of truth. And so, sorry, I warmly welcome. I believe you can unmute yourself. Let's connect to the world as it were. God bless you so much for okay. joining us. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for having me, Chrissy. It's, it's always yes, a pleasure yes. to learn with you guys. Yes, yes. So, uh, the floor is yours. You can just go ahead. And just before you continue, please send in your questions in the in the comment chat chats of whichever platform that you are connecting with us to. And would, at the end of his presentation, be trying to answer a lot of the questions. And so, please flow with us. Get your pens, your papers, your notebooks, your iPads, your, your tablets, whatever they are. And again, send in your questions as well. We would ask them and make sure those questions are answered. So, sorry, please, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks again, Chrissy. Hello, everyone. Um, like Chrissy said, thanks for making time out to have all of us learn together in these um, unusual times. But I, I, I trust and believe that all of us are well and safe wherever we are, wherever we are joining this program from. Um, Today we have the, the opportunity to discuss the interesting subject of truth. And, and when, when I got the invitation from Rescue World, I I was thinking, why 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 would why would anybody want to tackle this kind of subject in the, in these days? I mean, especially if you're looking at it from Ghana where there, there are too many stories out there, even with this COVID, people do not believe whatever anybody puts out there. So <laughs> I was wondering why, why, why we'd want to be doing this, but um, deeply appreciated. It's, it's, when, when I was preparing for this, I think um, it's sort of like an imagery came to mind of a young man who is standing in the court um, who has been asked to place his hand on the Bible and then mm -hmm. do what they always do. <laughs> I swear to you, swear. <laughs> the, truth, the whole swear. truth, and nothing but the truth. <laughs> God. But I was thinking, what, what will happen in court one day when somebody says wait a minute uh lawyer or judge when you say you're asking me to swear tell the truth what do you exactly mm. mean by truth mm. what, what 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 would what would happen in a court of law if that were to happen one day and uh my mind also went to the story we are all aware of of uh, Pontius Pilate the man who had the opportunity to ask the most telling question in history that's what I call it he stood wow. before Christ and asked him, what is truth? And he did not wait for an answer. <laughs> I don't know how the, the, the I don't know how, how things will, will turn out, but if 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 I get to meet him someday, I'll ask him, Master, what what why didn't you wait for an answer? Wait for an answer. Because if he had waited, if he had waited for an answer, <laughs> he would not be in this kind of trouble. I mean, he was asking the one who made the claim that he is the truth, the most important question in history, what is truth? And he walked away. But today we are, we, are, we are trying to discuss the subject. What is truth? Um, I want to approach it this way. And I want, I want us to, to, to look at it like this. Um, in, 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 I think it's R.C. Sproul and even Ravi Zacharias who choose mm -hmm. to approach the definition of truth as this. That truth is that which is co consistent with reality. Or mm -hmm. truth is that which conforms with reality. Uh, we'll break it down as we go along. But um, I want all of us to actually look at it like that and then see if we can, we can follow that line. What I mean is this. If we look at the, the human life, we will, not be able, we will not be able to have time to actually pick and choose and point out particular things that we want to, to define as this is true and this is not true, this is false, this is true. But when we look at it in the, in, in the broader scheme of, th of things, we are looking at life, and the deep questions that sit with all of us, the deep questions that we all want answers to, being the questions of origin, morality, eternity, and destiny. I mean, if you look at the struggles we go through in life and the challenges that, that we encounter, it is themed around these areas. Origin, eternity, morality, and destiny. Yes. And whether we like it or not, sometimes we think that um, the, all the worldviews are fundamentally the same and the differences are superficial. I, I don't agree with that. The differences mm. are in the fundamentals. Mm. <laughs> the differences in the worldviews are in the fundamentals. And so if you really want to strip the worldviews now, you need to actually look at the answers that every worldview gives when it comes to the questions of, the, of our hearts, which is morality, questions of origin. I mean, how do we come about to be here? 
Mm. I mean, we are here, all right, but how do we get here? And as we are here, how do we make the choice between right and wrong? Somebody will ask, why are we here in the first place? Yeah. And mm. then, like the disciples at Jesus Christ, if a man dies, will he live again? What happens what after death? After we die. Mm. After we die, what next? So there are, these are questions that no matter your worldview, no matter where you are from, no matter where you live, no matter your age, the answers to these questions are not ones that you will take lightly. And so when you are looking at the worldview's answers that they give, we must look at it in the light of, 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 of these deep questions. And then, like I said, if truth is that which conforms to reality, we need to look at the answers we are going to get from these worldviews when it comes to these questions of our hearts. And then unbiasedly ask ourselves, are these answers something we are willing to accept based on the reality that we are reality? And that is where I want to take it from. So when we are looking at truth and is Jesus the truth, um, mm -hmm. when we talk about the person of Jesus Christ, and like I said, fundamental, the fundamentals are where the differences are. And so come to the Christian worldview, you have a personality who is making a very fantastic claim. He is not giving us a set of precepts or presuppositions or anything to point us to the truth. He is making a claim that he is the embodiment mm. of truth. Mm. Yeah. That should be as where everybody who is a serious seeker in this Christian faith should pause and realize that something very, very, very important is happening here. Like I'm saying, we are having a being who is not saying that mm. I can point you to the truth or I can tell you right from wrong. He's saying go. that I, I am, am the truth. Mm. I am mm. the truth. If you are looking for truth, I am, I am the truth. The question then is, when he told us that he is the truth, was he telling us the truth? When he told, when he made that claim, is this some, is this something that we we can actually ride on and actually stand with so that we can proceed and look at, at the answers that this the worldview that is a proponent of Jesus in light of all the fundamental questions that we have in our human hearts? Because if if that is the case, then we have all seen something very unique as Christians. If it is not the case, then we can just throw it all away and call it sophistry and just see if we can look at other worldviews. I, I, I hope and pray that you are following me up to this point. Very closely. Now, um, yeah. Please go on, yeah. Okay, because do you want on. any clarification made? I just wanted you, uh, you know, mentioned four areas where we all ask specific questions in life. Origin, morality, destiny, I missed one. Yes. I, I thought there was one that I missed. Okay, so there are, there are the questions of origin. How mm -hmm. do we come about to be? Yes. Then morality. Yes. As we are here, how do we make the, 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 the choices of between right and wrong? Yes. Then thirdly, we have to look at destiny. Why are we here in the first place? Okay. What are we here for? And then mm -hmm. eternity, what happens yes. after we die? So thank you. Thank you. Forgive me for uh, breaking in. Please continue. No problem where, at all. You were um, about to um, investigate the claim of Jesus Christ that he is the truth. Yes. Okay. So, and I think, I think um, like I said, it's a fantastic claim. And we need to, we, we need to look at it like that. Um, I find that it's, it's a bit difficult for you to come to it again unbiased after you become a Christian. So no Christian can look <laughs> at that claim unbiased anymore. But <laughs> if you were to look at it unbiased, you, ha you have a, a, a young man who lived um, um, 30 years, started ministry and died, as it's claimed, 33 years. So three years of ministry. And um, um, he as a historical figure who existed in a particular time span, um, we may not have time to be able to go into the historicity of his personhood, but we have a, a, somebody who we can actually investigate. Yeah. yeah. So he's putting himself out there to be the truth. Now, when we, when we talk about the questions of origin, eternity, morality, and destiny, straight away, you need to real, we, you, you quickly realize that for somebody to be able to point us in the right direction, to the answers to those questions, that person or being must transcend us. Mm. 
a person wow. or a being who will be able to give any meaningful answer to these questions must transcend us. That means he has to, he has to, he, he, he does not live in our time. He shouldn't live in our time and space or conform to the laws that we navigate around. He should be, he, he should be above us to be able to be a moral authority, to be able to give us answers that we should take with any, with, with, with any interest at all. So for me, if I, am, if I were able to look at it unbiased, straight away when Christ in talking about truth makes a claim that he is the truth, I, I, mm. I, I don't know about you, Chrissy, but I realize that the, 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 the purposefulness of that statement is straight away visible. Mm. Position himself as the being who has the moral authority to be able to give you answers that you should take as weighty, that you should take as meaningful to the answer, yeah. the questions that you undoubtedly have in your heart. And that is what he was doing there. Now. Please okay. proceed, yes. Uh, um, so I'm not, I'm not seeing anybody, so question, I'm going to pick on you. <laughs> Okay. Please so, become me. Please become me. If 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 that is the if that is the hello. Yes, pick on me. Okay. Okay. So if that is the, if that is true, then we need to we need to interrogate the 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 person of Jesus Christ, hmm. and then proceed from there. Now, yeah. one of the things that quickly become very visible when we look at Jesus Christ in 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 his relationship to man is his accurate description of our human condition. Wow. No, so I don't know about you, but every human, what, I, I, I use this example a lot. It is, it is the, it is, I think uh, Ms. Margaret, Malcolm Margaret just said it. He says that it's one of the, the is the most empirically verifiable thing. The depravity of the human heart is the thing that mm. is easiest to prove. Yeah. I use the story a lot. So I bought roasted plantain for my niece. Okay, so I didn't buy it for her. I bought it for myself, and I gave her. Uh, I gave one out of it to her. And because she was playing with a friend, I took it out from my hand and broke it into two. Mm. and gave half to the other kid. My niece comfortably put hers down, walked straight to the girl, took her piece from her hand and put it on the floor and stepped on it. <laughs> and then she walked back, sat down quietly and finished her piece of roasted planting. I was sitting there, I was shocked. <laughs> now, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know why people say that, oh, uh, our our... Our society and our circumstances are what shape our hearts and our character. And so when we get here, uh, the evil that we, we perpetrate is because of our environment. I don't believe mm. that. Because I've seen, I've seen, I've, anybody who observes kids, I don't, Chrissy would, because Chrissy, you have kids of your own. The tantrums yeah. they, they can throw. The Wonder way where they, they learn demands. Them. You don't know where they learn it from. My daughter is turning one in nine days. And that kid will give you a slap on the eyeball <laughs> when she has, she has something in her hand and you're trying to pull it out of her hand and she doesn't agree with you. The, mm -hmm. the, the anger and the violence that comes out of her naturally is shocking. Mm -hmm. So oh, it is verifiable that our hearts are depraved. And when you look at the person of Jesus Christ and the message that he presents, his accurate description of our condition tells me that he's onto something. Mm. 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 He says that man. Hello? Yes, please, you're back on. I believe Asari's uh, connection is um, a little twitchy, but no worries. Just stay with us. Um, I'm sure he's going to be back on in just a minute. So, sorry if you're back on, you can continue. We were okay. Hello. We were saying that Jesus was on to something when he when he described the accurate when he accurately described the depravity of man's heart. Exactly, 
exactly. And and so um, I think what that's that's one of the things that if you're actually going to look at the fact that I said earlier on that truth is that which corresponds to reality. If you look at our reality as human beings and how we live our lives, our personal struggles with right and wrong. Yeah. You realize that quickly when he says that the hearts are depraved, you have to bend in that direction and agree with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And those of us who have a Christian bent, I, I'm not, I don't know if all of us who are on this feed now are Christians, but those of us who have a Christian bent, you begin to realize that you see that struggle in the writing of Paul. He says that um, the good that I want to do, I cannot do. The evil that I do not want to do, that, that is what I do. Oh, wretched man that I am. I think that, that is every human being's experience. Mm. Our depravity and the corruption that is in our hearts is something we, we, we confront on a daily basis. Everybody who is, everybody who is, who is married would understand the fact that, the, the, that you, are, you are married. But that does not save you from temptation. That is our reality. And so he's sort of like bullseye when he points it out to us. Yeah. Like I said, in the fundamentals, that is where the difference is. You do not have any body of any worldview, whether it is, is, is uh, uh, Panthees or is, the Mon- is, is Islam, whatever it is. You do not have any personage of any of these worldviews make, m- making that description and hitting it bull's eye like he does. Mm-hmm. Remember what I said earlier on? We will not be able to, to pick handpick and talk about all the things that we need to know what this is true, this is false, this is right, this is wrong. But what we need to do, realize is that once you're able to look at the answers we get from him, when it comes to the deep questions that come to, that matter to us, we sort of like get a framework that we can be guided by moving forward when we are supposed to live by truth and present truth to other people. Yeah. Yeah. So when when you look at the, the, the description of the human condition, you move on to it's not just the description, it's in the solution that he provides. The uniqueness then also lies in the solution that he provides. There are so many, I mean, uh, uh, um, uh, I, I, I bent towards Kofi uh, Owusu uh, song. He says that he, last Sunday I went to church, I was convinced, I was confused. Was that uh, is it church or Gimpa? I mean, so many self-help, self-help things you have to do. Um, uh, do this, do that, uh, 12 steps to that, 15 steps to that. I mean, you have worldviews that have actual ABCs that you are supposed to do to be able to yeah. achieve holiness, righteousness, change yourself, rebrand yourself. Um, so many things. But in the provision he, he gives, he presents, when it comes to the depravity of our hearts that he has so well nailed, the uniqueness also lies in that fundamental. Mm. In Christ, we are, not, we are not told what to do. In Christ, mm-hmm. we, are, we, we are told what he has done in the transformation wow. of a person's call, his heart. You, you, how, do you, how, how do you tell a being whose bent is towards evil to help himself? And we are doing something mm-hmm. in ICAS now that the team is working on that. I am, I'm following silently, but it's amazing. The, 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 they are talking about this like, like the, the God, in our, God in our image. One of the statements that have become things that fly around, such, God helps those who help, who, who help themselves. How how is the how 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 did it even come about? But that's subject for another day. You see, how do you tell a being whose heart is depraved to be able to help themselves? In Christ, the solution is provided. He did not tell you to 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 redeem yourself. He did not tell you to do A B C. He he's taking it upon himself to do that for you and giving you a new heart from where you yeah. can live the life that he expects you to live. That is unique. Amazing. And if you look at it historically, which we will not be able to have time to go into, but maybe the Q and A will give us um, some time to touch on these things. This, uh, there is a, the the death of Jesus Christ is not something that can be debated any more by anybody who is actually interested in looking at the facts. Yes, <laughs> into it at the facts. No, I mean I don't think any anybody where the assault is trying to debate it anymore. So we will not be <laughs> we will not believe at the point. But his death is something that can be proven. And the reason yeah. why he died is even more important. The fact that the Bible talks about the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God being eternal life. So the, the, the requirement of holy living and righteousness is not something he, he, he puts on you in a vacuum. He's taking the initiative to give you capacity to do that in taking upon himself your nature and dying for, for your sins. So that is also something that we need to be able to look at. And like I said, mm-hmm. truth is that which is, uh, conforms, uh, corresponds to reality. If you look at our, our lives as it is, and if you look at 
look at it even in the movies. Um, um, I, I hear um, Chadwick, Chadwick passed um, yeah, I think yesterday. Yeah, sadly, yesterday. Sadly, sadly. May, 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 may he so rest in peace. But um, if you look at it even in, in, the, in the movies, look at how we understand the need for heroes. Somebody to yeah. step up and do that which we cannot do for ourselves. Like I said, treat the average correspond to reality. So the fact yeah. that he steps up as the ultimate hero is something that that we are, we clearly understand. Mm. Something that we clearly understand, and so in in that we have to actually also give him some attention. But then let's look at the the life of Jesus Christ as is presented in the Gospels. Yeah. For somebody to be able to make that kind of claim and look at the 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 quality of life which he lived. Um I, I think in the, in the other session we had the last time we were together face to face, we were talking about the um liar lord lunatic. Yes, and, and that's... yes. You you look at you look at his life and the quality of life, the respect with which he treated people and, and, and women. And the kind of the kind of being he was, the kind of gentleman he was, actually being draws you to him to pay attention to some of the things he's saying. Yeah. But all this will be nonsense if you see, and that's the thing. Jesus Christ did not just claim to be the truth; he claimed also to be able to put it down his life and pick it up again. Pick it up again. So Paul makes a, another another uh, another statement, which is something we, we ought to consider. He talks about the fact that if uh, only in this life we had hope in Christ, then of all men we are to be pitied. If indeed Christ Jesus, with all the fantastic claims and the, the accurate description of the human condition and all the blah, 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 and he also made another claim that he can die and resurrect in three days and nothing happened, like the guy was a no-show. Exactly. <laughs> but here again, we have vouched, we have vouched mm. something that we need to pay attention to as Christians. And like I said, if you want to look into it, you can look into it now. Um, Quincy rightly said it from the beginning. Ours is an age of explosion of information. If you are looking yeah. at, at the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a historical verifiable fact, you can. Yeah. The evidence of the resurrection is something that people can no longer downplay anymore. They are too, there's too much material out there. Yeah. The, there's stories about swoon theory, stories about somebody else <laughs> dying in his place. All those that things don't hold water it's, anymore. That's all. <laughs> So what we have then is a being who claimed to be the truth, who, who, who defined our condition, who tells us of a solution that is provided, which he, in, in a way, like, he becomes the solution that we, we need. He buttresses the, 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 the claims he makes about God by the life that he lives, and then he dies and resurrects. Mm -hmm. This is something that is uniquely Christian. Now let's look at, let's look at, if this is true, let's look at what the implications for the, the questions that matter to us. The questions of our origin, mm -hmm. our destiny, how we choose right and wrong when we are here, and what happens after we die. If Christ is who he claimed to be, yeah. what then happens to somebody who is asking about their origin? We can pay attention to what the Bible says. Because yeah. if you look at the Bible... Um, with time, I, I'll just say it, like they, they say that um, the Bible is the finger of God in history and Christ as a central figure or Christ, yeah. Christ as a central theme. So if you look at the Bible and you look at all the claims that are in there, when you look at the, quest, the, the questions of our origin, we are given an answer that we can hold on to from the Bible. Yeah. We are made in the image of God. Mm. If you look at the, the, the book of Luke chapter 3, the Bible talks about the genealogies. Blah, blah, yes. blah, blah, this, we got this, this, we got this. And he says that, and Adam, the son of God. We are, we are, we are beings who are made by God for God to be in a loving relationship with him. That is where we are from. That is our pater. That is our source. God is our source. We are not a product of time plus matter plus chance. We are not those beings that have come out of a primordial slime. We are here because God wants us to be here. And he has created us for a loving relationship with himself. Yeah. Now, if you want, if you, if let's look at it this way. If somebody gives you an answer like that to the question you have in your heart of your origin, you see, would you, I believe, I feel that that is something that I will readily accept if I am, 
if I were not already biased as a Christian. But that is something I already as, as opposed to being a product of time plus matter plus chance. Because you see, if we are really a product of time plus matter plus chance, then really the law of the jungle ought to apply. Mm, mm, mm. Then the fetus should survive. So then we should not have any qualms or, 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 or nuances about people using me ways and means to get by, killing people and all those things. But you see, in yeah. our reality, we don't live like the law of the jungle applies. And so it tells us that that answer is not something you are willing to accept. Mm. I mean, that even that even moves into the, the, the morality bit. Right. Um, um, yes. Like, yes. We do not live, we do not live like um, left is right and right is left. We have societal systems where we have built jails, where we have laws. I mean, so we... We, the, 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 the choice of right and wrong is not left to the discretion of the individual, if you look at it in society and how we live. Yeah. So when we talk about right or wrong, it's according to your, 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 your taste, as it were, or your feelings. Yeah. We do not live like that on the day to day. I mean, try driving like that one day and see. <laughs> Just try driving like that in, on the streets of Accra or Mumbai or Paris, wherever you are. Yeah like that and see and say that i'm going to go in i'm going to go in the opposite lane you will quickly know but you will quickly notice that it is not possible yeah hello yes please you're back on sorry about my my, my connection yes so like I'm saying, the way we live our lives tells us that we, we do not live um, the choices of right and wrong to relativism as, we, as some would have us believe. Mm -hmm. I don't know of any married man who will walk into his house to see his wife with uh, another man in bed and say that, oh, it all depends on what you mean by love and walk away. <laughs> you won't do that. And so the, in there we realize that the, uh, some of the things that we we try to post it in in trying to live life, we don't we are not actually we are not actually honest with those things. But we realize that right and wrong, like I said, transcends us. And we have a being who is talking about being truth, who points to the fact that he may actually transcend us. And so what he tells us becomes the governing or the basis for us to be able to define right and wrong. And so for the, for, for the Christian world, we right and wrong that do not originate from us. It originates from our source, who is God. His laws, his commands, his edicts, his precepts are what we go by. And when we talk about destiny, what are we here for? If we, had, if, if we, we were products of time plus matter plus chance, nobody should be asking. We should, we should not even be having those desires. Yeah. <laughs> the question of what, what I'm doing here should not become part of the equation if we just came out of chance. Why in our, wh how in our wiring the time plus matter plus chance puts that kind of desire in our heart? To what end? And there's no meaning to life, basically. There is no meaning to life, basically. Mm -hmm. But if we are created by him and for him, and we are here for him, then purpose is a valid question which anybody can ask. And the fact that we, act, we, we, we ask that question tells us that what I've said previously probably is true. And lastly, we'll talk about justice. We'll talk about uh, 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 judgment. I mean, uh, or everybody, everybody who, yeah, eternity. Everybody who is a, who is a, a lover of movies would, <laughs> would, would, would agree with this. So when the killer dies in a... <laughs> But when the killer dies in the movie. It's like it's like in one of James Bond's movies. Mm. When the killer dies, you want him to fall from a story building and be hit by a boulder, then a car will drop on top of him, and then the sword will drop from the top of the car and pierce his head. <laughs> we we like to see evil vanquished. We like to see evil punished. Mm. We like to see uh, good rewarded. We like to see people who, who live right celebrated. There's a longing in our heart for something that is beyond the here and now. And so we look in the scripture, it says that uh, he has set eternity in our hearts. And only he can, can 
gratify that desire. If all life was was the three score, three score years and ten, or three score years and nine, whatever it is, you and I, that 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 for me, I don't know about you, um, Chrissy, but that thinking that you and us is not something I'm willing to accept. My in my reality, I don't agree with that. I don't accept the fact that people who are NASA. Anybody mm. who has lost a loved one will tell you this. I lost my sister when I was in um, um, uh, Pemper College oh, those days. I will, not, I, will not, I will not agree with you when you tell me, say, Nipo Wana, sir. Nipo Wana, sir, because I, I, I want to see them again. Because Nipo Wana, sir, then what is the point of all this? You understand? Forget about yeah. Christian bias or any other bias. The Nipo Wana, sir, statements, you no, know, as a human being, it's not something you readily accept. Because yeah. you... There's this X something. Ah, nipo wana asase, nipo wana insane. Eni se nipo wana insane. It shouldn't be all that there is. Yeah. And in the scriptures, and in, in, the, in what Christ gives us, we will clearly see that, he says that where I am, you too will be also. You also will be. There's, there's a certain belongingness, there's a certain afterness to all this, where we get to relate with him as beings who are created for relationship and fellowship. When I hear that, it is something my heart easily accepts that as opposed to the alternative. Mm -hmm. So what is truth? Truth in how Christ has presented it takes it from it takes it he, he, he knocks the ball out of the playing field and puts it in a different plane and claims to be the truth. He claimed to be the truth and he buttressed it by resurrecting from the dead. And so I believe that when he was telling us that he is the truth, it's something we should take seriously. And if he is the truth, relationship with him and fellowship with him gives us the framework from where we can live life, making choices from that source. Mm -hmm. Forget about however difficult the choices are. Forget about what a person is presented with from the day to day because you are presented with difficult choices. We are presented with we, we challenges on the day to day, I mean, if I ask anybody on this platform to tell us challenges they go to where their faith is tested, tested, where they've met, I mean, a terrible experience and all those things, everybody has a story. But in relationship with God through the person of Jesus Christ, you are given a framework where you can live your life with meaning and purpose and make your choices right and wrong based on a love relationship and understanding of, of the fact that you are God's child, an emissary on a journey here to please him and he will give you the resources and the energy to be able to do that which you must whilst you are here. Mm. Truth is not relative. Truth is a person. Like, uh, 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 one saying that is always funny to me, he says that uh, those who say that there's no such thing as absolute truth are always forget that they are making an absolute claim. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> those who claim that there's no Hello? Yes, hello. Yes. I was saying that the interesting thing is with those who say there's no such thing as truth, they forget that when they say that they, 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 they are making an absolute statement. So they are saying something mm -hmm. that they want to be true. So that is a self defeating statement. Yeah. So there is such a thing as truth. We, 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 they are, and truth is an absolute. We live our lives on the day to day confirming that. We live by absolutes. Yeah. We live by truth, whether we like it or not. But in Christianity, we are given something beautiful and unique. We are given a person. Truth is a being. Truth is a person who can be known, who can be related with. And from, and from that relationship, a person can draw strength to live the way they must and make their choices in light of that relationship. And I think that's, that's why I want to peg it so that we can take yes. some questions if there are any. Awesome. Yes. So at this point, I just want to remind us all let's your questions coming um i see all the comments continue connecting i see that a lot of people are sharing the link as well it's good uh, one question so i have a question of my own so maybe i'll put that forward whilst i wait to see other ones so um i think that um in 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 one of the points that you have made um whether directly or by inference was that there has to be a moral authority in order for there to be uh um morality so there has to be god in a sense god has to exist if we have to have morality 
But what do you say to those that, for example, claim that you really don't need God for there to be morality in the sense that um, based on communal decisions that we take, based on communal agreements, we can't establish a moral code for ourselves without having God to exist. So the, the, the claim being made is that God does not need to exist for us to have morality in our system. What is your response to something like that? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's, 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 that's a question that is longstanding. But um, yeah. so, um, Chrissy, what we need to realize is this. When somebody makes that kind of claim, forget about wherever they are coming from. They are not being consistent with their worldview. When you begin yeah. to talk about morality, existence, you are borrowing from a theistic worldview. Mm. Automatically, when you begin to, be, to engage in that discussion, you are not being consistent with the worldview you, 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 you espouse. You understand? Because an atheist ought not to talk about morality. Right and wrong are not categories that should matter if atheism is true. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. So the discussion, the, the, the morality argument is possible because there's a theistic view on that matter. Mm. And so they are in our ballpark when they are having that discussion already. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Because morality ought to transcend us. It cannot originate from us. If society can come together and say that and, and formulate uh, what is right and wrong. So let's say in 200 years time, are they saying that society, and we have seen it happen. Yeah. The, in, yeah. in years past, there are things that our cultures frowned on, society frowned on, but with time, we are becoming more accommodating and accepting of some of these things. You understand? So are we trying to say then that as the goalpost shift, morality also shifts, it's not a safe place for anybody. That kind of argument is not a safe environment for anybody. So Especially, when you have a... Uh, so, mm. Yeah. Mm. Please go on. No, go on. You finish. Yeah. No, so when you have a couple of you, so when the majority is what decides what is right and wrong, if a day comes when somebody says that if you want, if you want to sleep with a child, a baby, or an infant, it's allowed, that becomes moral. Is that what we are saying? Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes from... you see, we don't, we don't extrapolate some of these things. But if mm -hmm. that is true, we need to extra extrapolate it to their logical outworkings because those things are possible if the majority decides. Amazing, yeah. Like so, I was just trying to say that, and and that also stems from the view that we've already established the depravity of man's hearts, so that exactly in man itself has, does not have the capacity to establish perfect moral laws, and so it's not possible Absolutely. that we, we can have moral laws without um, a moral authority. And in this case, has to has to exist. Yes, beautiful, beautiful. Still looking out uh, to see if there are any other questions. I am not seeing any yet. I am not seeing any as yet. Um, okay, so then I'll, I'll, I'll still go on to another another question sure. on establishing um, truth, as it were. We have, I think we've established that for us, truth is only defined in Christ. He's a person, he's Christ. But what then do we say? to the claim that that is we are only saying that because we are sticking to a book called the bible and what mm -hmm. how do we prove that the bible in itself is is saying what is true I, that is to say that the evidence that people are using to make to make the claim that jesus is true is based on what they have read in the bible what is to say that the bible is itself is something to be acceptable is it infallible is it really what it, what is it something worth depending on? That I think that's that's that, that's a question. Can we depend on the Bible to be able to tell us exactly what we are saying? Okay, so um, I I would I would straight away say yes because I'm a Christian, but then that would defeat the purpose of the question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think most of the time when this question is asked, we 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 seem to forget something about the Bible. When we are talking about the Bible as a book, you are talking about a historical document. Mm. And so I realized that most of the time people talk about the Bible, they talk about it as a book that belongs to Christians. And so it's our book. And so when we talk about it, the bias is already there. But I think in all fairness, we need to look at the Bible as a historically accurate document and, and, and approach it like we would any other historical document. When we look at it like that, you begin to realize the uniqueness of the Bible in itself as a historical document. 
There is no other document in history like it. Mm. In terms of the, the content, the authorship, the, the, the different books and the consistency of the message that is there, if you, if you act, like I said, if you will take time to look at it as a historical document, it will marvel you. If you would use extra biblical material to look at some of the things that are said in the Bible, you begin to realize that there are even characters in, the, in history that, that we should actually consider less likely to have existed than some of the characters the Bible talks about, and even the yeah. person of Jesus Christ. And so I think that is where, uh, for those of us who are Christians, we need to start taking this argument too. To start talking to people about the historical uh, historicity of the Bible. And let's look at it like that. Once they talk about the Bible, be forgive me again. Yes, please. Can flow. But I think that is where we need to start attacking this question. Yes, we need to start responding to this question like that. Let's look at the Bible as a historically accurate document. Anybody who has, forget about the, the feelings and the biases. Anybody who has mm -hmm. anything against the Bible's historicity should present it. You understand? Because this is a book, uh, I, I think in its name in itself, it talks about it being like a library, bibliothèque. Yeah. That is where the, the, the French connotations run. So the Bible is from that bibliothèque. So you are talking about a library of 66 books that talk about historical accounts of things. And so if you have such a material, any student of history will tell you that you don't look at it lightly. You, you take a hammer to it, but approach it like you would any other historical document. Mm -hmm. Then you realize that in manuscripts and other things, people like Julius Caesar, Plato, Pliny the Younger, and all other people were less likely to have existed than even the personage of Jesus Christ. So when, you, when we quote Plato, when we quote Socrates and Pliny the Younger and other people comfortably and accept that they existed and their quotes are things that we write on, why would anybody do less for Christ who, is, who has been proven to, to, uh, to have more to, to support his existence than even they? So over the, over the period, I realized that it is not really um, an argument about the truth of the Bible. It is about an, a, a bias against that people have it. against it because it belongs to, Christian, to Christians. It's about yeah. that branding that makes it difficult for us to approach yeah. it that way. Yeah. If we were to probably apply the same, um, if I test. should say, test to a lot of the other yeah. documents that are so dependent on, a lot of historical documents so dependent on, then probably those would also fade out into, into oblivion. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. again, question. Um, my viewers and listeners and watchers and readers are not sending questions, so I'm still generating my own questions. So, please, if you send now, a question... That becomes please. scary. That means it's one of two <laughs> things. We have been talking too much or we have been talking over their heads and they're dangerous. <laughs> but I, I think following the comments, I think it, it's really going down with a lot of the, the viewers, so it's, it's, okay. it's good. Thank God. My question is that in, in us establishing the point and the truth that Jesus is truth, the person of truth is, is Christ Jesus, then can we find relevance, um, his relevance in all matters of life? Because I believe that if something has to be true, and this is my own, should I call it postulation? I, it's just something I think is common sense. That if something is true, it should have relevance in everything. So is Jesus mm -hmm. relevant in all things in, in our lives? Is, can, can, can't we segregate him and say, you know, this thing has nothing to do with Christ? You know, can, can I live a life where there are some aspects of my life that really don't have anything to do with Christ or, or because he's truth, he's relevant in every aspect of our lives. I hope my question is clear. Yes, it is. It is. Um, uh, uh, like, let, let me even make it a little interesting. So um, the type of shoe you wear in the morning, does it have mm -hmm. Christ involved? And those of us <laughs> who come from SU have been taught the, <laughs> the question of what would Jesus do being the, the standard mantra you run with in life yeah. but um i i i think that we need to appreciate the fact that if he's truth um he may not necessarily be you know may not necessarily be tagging everything christ 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 but like i said the framework he gives you for making choices in life becomes something that guides you in every area in your life like when the mm -hmm. you see um 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 
the, the disciples asked him the, the question about the commandments. And you see, if uh, sometimes when I read the Bible, I choose to be funny because if you look at the, the commandments and the, the Jews and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Kudinsis, those guys <laughs> stress the law's application to the 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 the, the, the limit. Logical. You understand? For so somebody who was living under the law at the time. <laughs> Exactly. So for somebody who was living under the law under the time, it is a valid question for him to ask to meet Jesus Christ and ask him, so of the, the laws now, which one is the one that we should keep? Like which is the most important of the laws, the commandments. But he his his, his answer there is what I want to give as my answer to the question you're asking, Casey. The 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 the, the, the summary of the, the, the commandments love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm. Like mm. like I'm saying, if he is truth. By his life, you see a life lived out of love, love for God and love for humanity. Hmm. I realized in my own life that when you live life with that mantra, you could hardly go wrong in your choices. Although the choices you make will be difficult, but whatever the situation is, what you need to decide would always be clear to you. It is just hmm. about the difficulty in, in, in deciding to go the way you know is right. But to be confused to say, I don't know what to do, when you are living life, understanding in a loving relationship with God and that horizontal tr translation of it to the, your fellow man, when you are, you are caught between a rock and a hard place, you will know what to do. And so I think that in that way, invariably then he becomes involved in every area of our lives because our love for him becomes the, the, the guiding, sort of like a compass for how we live our lives. And so I think that's, yeah. that's how I see it. Yeah, that's clear. Awesome. So there's another question um, from our brother Kafui. Kafui says that, or okay. he's asking, that, there are many rel religions and everyone has his or her, in quotes, truth, which they believe to be true. Can all these religions simultaneous, simultaneously be true? And to add to this, there's always the, the popular um, story that is used that a lot of different people go to uh, see an elephant. They are all blind, a lot of blind people, and each one touches a different part of the elephant. And that's how they term religion to be. So the one that is touching the, the, the trunk thinks the elephant is soft. The one that is touching the, um, you know, the, the oh, oh dear. I forgot what it's called. The, 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 yes. the, the one that touches the ear thinks the elephant is a fun. Exactly. The one that touches the skin thinks it's a rough, it's a rough animal and all that. Isn't that how the different religions are in approaching the same truth? Are all of them mm. true? Okay. Um, Kafi, thank you for your question. And um, because he, it's it's interesting. I mean, let's even use the story of the elephant as the as the beginning to try and see if we can answer Kafu's question. Um, the person who touches the trunk of the elephant thinks that the elephant is a snake. Mm. The one who touches mm. the ear of the elephant thinks the elephant is a fan, and the one who touches the trunk thinks that he's a, a is a tree. But this is what is still true: the elephant is still an elephant. He's none of those things. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. Yes. Yes. By our experience and how we choose to 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 interpret our 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 what do you call it our experience of the elephant that does not change the elephant from what it really is, and so yes. we have wrongly discovered the elephant. That does not make the elephant a fan, a trunk, or a snake. Mm. Mm. When I when I began from the beginning uh, from the start, I was saying this that most of the time we think that religions are fundamentally the same and superficially different. It is not true. All religions are fundamentally not the same. We think that it's even Christians alone that make exclusive claims. No. Religions have their claims that they will not batch on. If you investigate, you realize that every religion has, has its um, exclusivist points that they will not batch on. Even the Baha'i that say that they are all encompassing will not embrace somebody who does not accept that. <laughs> you understand? And so this is what we need to realize. That it is possible that all the religions are wrong like the story of the elephant. Yeah. But for them all to be true, it is not possible. Mm. And that puts a responsibility on anybody who actually is a, is a serious seeker for truth, who in answering the deep questions of our hearts would actually want something that is consistent with reality. You need to actually investigate the, the worldviews based on the answers they give to these questions to your heart. And then if what they tell you is something that is real to you that's something that's livable to you nothing stops you from going that way but it is clear that all the religions cannot be onto the truth 
if truth is an absolute only one of them can be true if the same elephant is being interpreted as a fan a snake and a trunk by different observers it, it, the entire elephant cannot be the snake amazing amazing so we need and, to look at it like that we need to remember that the elephant remains the elephant and so for yeah. those of us who are seeking truth we ought to try and experience the elephant for the animal it is and not what is, and what not what is posited to be and in the christian worldview i believe that we have one who came and presented himself exactly. as the truth so it's not like god has left us in the dark trying to describe who he is in our own way he brought he mm. presented him mm. we are not trying to find who the elephant should be the elephant has told us who he we is. know who the elephant is exactly yeah. and that's brilliantly put the elephant has yeah. told us who he is yeah, yeah. amazing amazing wonderful yes so um I'm not finding any more questions. I'm not finding any more questions still. And I think just, I think um, to add to that, because um, just, just, this just came to mind. The Bible says that God, who in past and sundry times spoke to us through the prophet, has spoken to us in these last days once and for all through His Son yeah. Jesus Christ. And when He said that the elephant has told us who He is, that is scriptural. The elephant yeah. has not left uh, Himself to be interpreted by us. He has told us clearly, "I am an elephant," and so it stands to reason that we should hear Him for what He says He is. Brilliant. Amazing. Amazing. Well, well. Um, okay. Just looking at not, not, not many questions. I think that one of the things that we miss from um, direct face-to-face -face interactions is the, you know, plethora of questions. I realize usually when you're mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. dreams, that as many questions as you'd have uh, when, yeah. when, when, okay. Um, Let's see, I jotted a few things down. Most of it you answered. I'm trying to see if I can find any that I can still ask. Okay. So, okay. So then there's this question. Maybe a bit of it has been answered, but maybe you can still touch on it again. There are many of the religions that actually don't deny Jesus Christ. They just mm -hmm. can't accept that he has to be God. I mean, they accept that he was a mighty leader. He accepted that he was a mm. mighty prophet. Why can't we just end it there? Why do we Christians want to, at the end of the day, um, want to establish that, no, he is God and he is truth and he is the only. Why is he not a prophet like anybody else? Why is he not a mighty leader like any other person? Why God and therefore why truth? Okay. Um, good question. And um, let me just even write on the back of what you just we, you just said. If the elephant has told us who he is, I mean, who are we to try to describe him as something else? When they talk about mm -hmm. Christians trying to make Jesus God or all those things, it's as though we are we are putting the words in his mouth, but we are not. We are just saying what he said about himself. Yeah. And so it is not as though we are trying to make a good man a prophet and a prophet God. That is not what any Christian is trying to do. We are trying to make, we are trying to tell you that God lived as a good man and he was a prophet at the same time, if, if that's anything I can say. And so I think that's, that's how we need to look at the conversation. It is not as though we are trying to make Jesus say things he didn't say. Um, I mean, we've encountered that a lot when you talk to people like, oh, Jesus Christ was a good man. I mean, it was, a, it was nice. It was, uh, somebody says everybody has a problem with, with us when we talk about Jesus being God. But you see, we are not the ones saying that. He said that if he says that he's the truth, the same in that same breath, he's talking about he and the father being one. He's just, in that same breath, he talks about before Abraham, I am using those phrase, that phrase, that yeah. that unique phrase for himself. So that's why I'm saying that it is not we putting those words in his mouth. If he said those things about himself, we ought to take him seriously. We ought to. And I think that that's what I would really say in, in, in that direction. He, we ought to take him seriously. We can investigate those claims he made, but we cannot say he didn't make them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he did not put himself forward as a just a leader. He did not put himself a, a leader as or a good man. He said he was. He was God. Did he? That's another question. Did he? Because I know there are many religions to that. That he clearly put himself forward as God. Um, that um, Jesus actually claimed to be God. They said no. He never. He never really said that he was God. So. Can you maybe touch on a few things that show that he actually made that claim of himself? And it's not that we are putting it in his own mouth here. Yeah. 
Okay, I mean, um, the, if you go into the Gospels, you realize that even the Jewish people understood what he was saying. The times mm -hmm. that they wanted to stone him. Yes. He says that I and the Father are one before Abraham I am. He says that they wanted to stone him because he being a man was comparing himself to God, making himself equal with God. Yeah. And so we, re we realize that Christ lived in a time when he was talking to a particular people group who were of a particular uh, cultural bent, and they understood what he was saying. In the things he was saying, even there before them, he was telling them he was God, and they wanted to kill him for it. Um, yeah. Albeit, they killed him for it. <laughs> but that is what he was saying. You understand? And so when people say that Jesus Christ did not say that he was God, and we are trying to make a good man divine, it is not, it is not true. Anybody who carefully searches the scriptures, that's one of the things that quickly hits you. The, the divinity, the fact that that is how he saw himself and how he project and how he chose to project himself. It, it hits mm -hmm. you very quickly. It hits you very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, think, I, I think, like I said, I think we ought to start investigating that claim. Uh, yeah. Rather than talking about it not being something he said, we ought to be investigating it because he clearly said it. He said it. Beautiful. Okay. So then, um, Michael is asking, based on all the way we've presented truth to be and how we presented Jesus to be the truth, so it's... Is it possible to say Christianity is a character? And I'm guessing it's based on, you know, sometimes you can describe all of this and it's part of why I ask a question of the relevance in the way we live our lives. It's, it's possible to describe all of this and then when you come to the, the simple fact of, okay, when it comes to my character then, is there a Christian character? I mean, I'm trying to put the question together well, but I don't know if you're getting it. Well, From yeah, the way we have described yeah. Jesus to be, He's a person. He is truth. Then, can we? Is there that relevance between that and saying that Christianity is a character? Um, okay. Um, Michael's question is brilliant. Thanks for the question, Michael, and thanks for putting it in the way you have, Chrissy. Um, you, if you look at the word Christian, and we all know it in terms of its origins, it was yeah. given because of a certain, for a particular reason. People yeah. who observed the character traits of those who have been with Christ. And in the statement that these have been with Christ, the Christianity is, that's, that's how Christianity was coined, you understand? So when Mike says that Christianity is a character, it is true. But we need yeah. not just put it at that, at that level. We need to understand that it's a particular character. It is Christ-like character. I remember when I was doing the presentation, I was saying that the life that Jesus Christ lived is an example to us. The life that Christ lived tells us that when he says he was God amongst us, the quality of life, the purity of life, his character was something that was impeccable. And that is what he has given us capacity and ability to become mm -hmm. in dealing with the sinful nature, which is in our heart that makes our bend towards evil that strong. He gives us the ability to be able to live like him. You understand? So when it is stripped down, indeed, Christianity is character. It is Christ-like character in the, visible in a person's life. And I think that even in these days, that is one of the things that the world needs so strongly. That, yeah. that logical outworking of salvation in the life of a man. The world needs to see how a man... Okay. Uh, I lost you on the world needs to see how a man. The sound seemed to have uh, vanished briefly. I still can't hear you. <laughs> I think we've lost your sound, if you can hear me. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. So you said the world needs to see how a man, and that's the point where we lost you, right there. Yes. I was saying that when Michael says that Christianity is character, it is true. The world needs to see what a man or a woman lives like when they have encountered the person of Christ. Mm. Because that mm. is the strongest argument for the truth of the gospel, the evidence of a transformed life. Mm. The Bible talks about let this, be, this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Bible talks about being conformed by the renewal of our minds. The, the, the transformed character is the strongest evidence we have. And, and in dealing with young people these days, my age and be, below, I realize that that is what is needed so much now. It is not yeah. in the talk. It is in the yeah. demonstration. It's not in the display of power. I mean, yeah. it is in the demonstration. It's in the care. It is in the love. Mm. It is in the meeting mm. of the felt needs of people. It's yeah. in that godly life where you are able to put the needs of other people before yourself. That yeah. speaks volumes. That is not something a human being normally does. But that is what yeah. a person who has encountered Christ is given ability to become. And so we need to be able to extrapolate. Move it from beyond the, the uh, 
suppositions and precepts and allow that relationship, that close relationship with his personage, transform us so that the world will experience him. It is true. Wow. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So thank you again, Michael, for that question. And Akwesi, Akwesi, Yabwa PJ. So Akwesi is our leader at um, Rescue World. Akwesi is right. asking, what are, some of the, yeah, what are some of the resources that we can read to help us in this era of information overload that will help us to defend our faith? And not just us, but even to answer some of the questions that sometimes we have, because there's something I say that people get easily... Um, it gets me confused by, uh, uh, you know, a meme that is making fun of Christianity or a two-minute video. Meanwhile, the faith is based on a long history of many, many mm. years mm. of evidence. So what are some of the things that we can Indeed. read and depend on to be able to help us not stay confused, help us defend our faith as Christians, help us get evangelized to others and, and things like that, some resources to help? Okay, okay. Um um before the pointing to the resources i would i would tr try and point in the direction of some of the things that we do in icas um i think mm -hmm. that one of the things that we have grown up with as christians those of you are in my generation and, be, and a little above and smallly below you begin to realize that we are not encouraged to ask questions and so there are some of us even have questions of our own that we have not interrogated before yes and so one of the things i tell people to do these days is begin to look at the questions of your own heart as yes. a christian Yes. You can sit down and make a list of them. There are questions you need answers to. Yes. Because when you started asking those questions in, in Sunday school, they said that oh, there are some <laughs> questions that are stuck somewhere in your mind that you yeah. have not interrogated. So sometimes the, the questions of our heart are revealed to us on the field of souls because you have not asked ourselves. When we encounter people and they ask those questions, they begin to realize, I'm a I mean, and I said, I have not really come to like. Uh, oh. closure on it. And so yeah. I would give that assignment to all of us to take time mm. and write out our questions. When you have it down, you can engage each other and see if somebody probably has thought about it and has an answer to it for you. Otherwise, then you can hit the web. Type out mm. the question as you have it. If you go to rzim.org, if you go to um, Christian Post, if you go to, there are so many, um, uh, there's um, Christian Apologetic Resource Ministry, C-A-R-M, website where they have some of so, so brilliant, brilliant answers to some of these questions that are common to all of us. So I think that we ought to do that first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we hear some of these things, we want to hit the ground running and jump to it. But I realize that it is more strategic to actually deal with your own questions and mm -hmm. be solid about your Christian faith first. Mm -hmm. So you might you might have questions as a Christian about the 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 authenticity of the Bible or the authority of the Bible or the fact that all worldviews might be the same and all that. Don't shy away from questions. We have a God who invites us for discussion. He says that, come, let us reason together. And so I think the first thing that ought to be broken is that notion that Christianity is not a religion where our questions can be entertained. It is a reasonable faith. And so I mm -hmm. think that's what we need to, that's the homework we ought to do first. And once you are doing that, you begin to realize that there are questions that will come up at you and you can hit the web. You can ask friends for books that are from good authors that uh, mm -hmm. can address some of these. I mean, we have um, R.C. Sproul, we have Rabbi Zacharias, we have, um, uh, we, there are so many other authors there. Yeah, I think Craig, really, yeah. I, I, and yeah, Craig, yeah. There's Craig, yes. There's William Lynn Craig and so many other authors. But I think that it helps when you have questions already outlined. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I, I actually remember one particular incident where I encountered someone in um, in Nigeria who mm. I engaged as a driver. I was trying to engage him, trying to evangelize to him. And I found out that he had moved from the Christian faith because he said, he said, and this is how he described it, he had pressure points, questions that he mm. Mm. couldn't mm. answer. He where there were pressure points. And eventually he found some other pseudo-Christian faith, one of these pseudo ones that seemed to give him a reasonable answer. But mm. engaging him, I realized... In my opinion, they were not difficult things to answer in the Christian faith. But I believe that because he was never asked. So, yeah, I mean, it was a short journey. I managed to mm. explain to him what the Christian point was and try to present to him the Christian worldview. And mm. that was the last I saw. I pray that that made sense and that made some change in his life. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So, there's, there's, we probably will run up soon, but there's another question. Interesting question to come at this time because it's, to me, it's not, it's not, um, it's not very easy, but 
God grant us grace. He says that Kafu is asking again, what is destiny? Is is it predetermined? And is there space for choice and free will if there is destiny? <laughs> okay. Uh probably I I I I don't I would like to understand why Kafu is asking the question. And so <laughs> because of time. Yeah, because of time, I probably be want to engage him separately so that we can end because that it's not. Mm. Uh, if you are talking about if there's space for choice or free will, if you go through this, the scriptures, you'll be, you'll be clearly get an answer for that. But uh, when I spoke about destiny in my presentation, I was talking about it in line of purpose. And that is why I broadly defined it as, as being here for the pleasure of God and for his relationship, for relationship with him and um, fellow men. And so that's how I'd want to put it. But because he's talking about pre predeterminism and other things there, I don't want to get into it. I would really want to engage him further. Um, so right. maybe you can just give him my number and then I can talk to him so that we can right. actually talk about the question properly. But okay. uh, whether or not we have, for choice and free will, yeah, yeah we need to talk further. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We need to talk further. <laughs> I, I, I perfectly understand why. Amazing. Um, I'm checking to see if there'll be any other lingering questions that are not there, but I think we can all agree it's been it's been edifying. I can't we can't have enough of of, of all of this, but um, no other questions. Let me check my own question sheets if everything is ticked off at this point. <laughs> um, that is it. I, I don't see any more questions coming in, so maybe we can take final words at this point and. If, if you're still coining your question, please forgive me um, that the question didn't come in as fast, but we would, we would be drawing the curtain, curtain on the event shortly. So, yes, sorry, any final words yes. before we, we run away from here? Okay, Chrissy, um, I, let me um, take that opportunity to thank the Rescue World team. Um, it's always a privilege learning with you lot. Uh, and it's also refreshing to note that in these times day and age there are people who are still interested in learning and fellowshipping and yeah. um meeting the needs of a world that desperately needs to encounter the reality of christ and so yeah. god bless all of you thank you so much uh for the opportunity um like i was saying when to to uh, mark's question i think that in relating in 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 knowing these truths i think that we should go deeper let's understand that our strength comes from our fellowship with the person of Christ. And so let's, let's, let's draw strength from there. Let us really desire to get to know him. Let that relationship continue to transform us, whatever the, the, the situation or the circumstances may be. And whatever opportunities we get, let us, let us extend a hand. Let people get to see Christ-likeness. It's not mm -hmm. just about pulpits. It's not just about prophesying. It's not about raising the dead alone. It's about paying school fees and feeding the hungry too. And that is what I would want to leave all of us with. Brilliant. God bless you so much. It's been an hour of um, a lot of deep stuff. And I wrote a lot personally. I know in every two or three sentences, there was something to chew on. So I, I do hope that you also captured a lot of these things. And let's continue to meditate on them. And like he said, it all comes down to having more fellowship with a person, with the person of Christ. All right. So um, before we round everything off, just a few announcements. Again, if you connected um, with us in the course of the, of the event, this is Rescue World, and um, Rescue World is just a group of young believers um, from different and diverse Christian backgrounds. We reach out to the world to express the much, love, much less love of Christ, and we have different activities throughout the year. And for the rest of this year, we still have a number of things happening. Corona has not stopped us from doing what we need to do. Um, even with our outreach um, activities, we still had different outreach activities and different modes of getting them done. And so we're still on and would love for you to connect with us. We'll be having a prayer conference on September 12th. And so mark your calendars, join us on the 12th of September, we have a prayer conference. And what we've termed a marriage clinic, marriage clinic from the 25th to the 27th of of um, September. Of course, if there's gonna be any changes, we would announce them in time, but that will happen. Then in October, we would have our breakfast meeting. Our breakfast meetings are always ongoing on the 10th of October, our breakfast meeting. And then we have a special event on 24th of October we've titled Uncensored. 
uncensored watch out for more details 14th on the month in the month of november we have another breakfast meeting we would have our camp and in, in november 26th tonight again we would let us know how things will be run especially in these unusual times in december our music and worship conference dubbed sound of rescue will happen and on 26th we are believing that by 26th, Corona would have left us, so we can still have a feast of joy on 26th. We encourage all of you who, who joined us on the Facebook page, please like our page and connect with us. We share a lot of updates on the page, and um, you can send a mail if you want to connect with us for to become a volunteer, to become a partner. And um, you can also um, subscribe to our website. Our website is rescue, rescueworld.org rescueworld.org, you can subscribe, you can connect with us there, you can partner with us, you can volunteer with us on our various outreaches. And so God bless you so much um, for joining us. This has been amazing. I have been edified. I believe you have been too. And I will look forward to connecting with you again. And before we go, I'll just share a word of prayer and then we'll be out of here. Father, I want to thank you. We thank you that even in this hour and in these unusual times, you still find ways to edify us in those ways to find ways to inspire us to strengthen us to set our mind at ease about many questions that we have in this faith we are praying that what we have heard will not just become mere words but will become doers of them will not be like a man that sees himself in the mirror and forget what he look, what he looks like we are praying that because of this lord we will gain rest in our minds about the faith we'll gain strength and grace to be able to defend the hope that is in us we'd have we have a way to defend the reason for the hope that is in us. We're praying that we'll be able to even draw others because of what we have learned in the name of the Lord. We continue to pray and declare that our lives are preserved in these times. We are preserved and healed of any infection, any disease. Our families are kept. And when all is said and done, Lord, the praise still goes back to you. May your name be praised in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, how we prayed. Amen. So my name is Kwesi and I've been your host today. And God bless you once again for joining. We look forward to coming your way again another time. Just a final word from me. Remember that he said that truth is a person and that person is Jesus Christ. God bless you.